Hi folks, Doyle Docs here. Welcome to my Sunday String Along. I'll be stringing along today with an old guitar I got years ago from Harvey Simmons, who was uh, at that time my barber and a great guitar teacher, even though I didn't take private lessons from him, but I, he used to let me come in and play this guitar, and I just loved Harvey. Our whole family did, and he left it to me. 1964 Gretsch 6120 Chet Atkins model. <laughs> that today and uh, and I saw the guitar here when I was about to sit down and start the program I thought oh yeah my Gretsch and uh, a lot of fun great Christmas guitar and I'll tell you why because if you see up here back here in the back there's a Chet Atkins Christmas album one of my favorite albums of all time uh, I think Dwayne Eddy said is his favorite record period and it has a, a Gretsch uh, 6120 on the cover of it in the snow I, and, uh, anyway so I had to play this Harvey Harvey Simmons and uh, what a gift and it, he was such a great uh, friend of the family and uh, it brings back great memories let me put this back here where it came from and uh, oh here we go and this is a guitar I haven't played a whole lot on the show and I just play it here mostly at home, and it's a wonderful guitar. Oh, man. So, I mean, what can I say? It's an Olsen. And so, James, thank you so very much.
guide us to thy perfect life. I saw but by the day. Christmas medley, and that's uh, the Carol's medley, I call it, and I just love that song, or those songs. It's a shame we can't, well, we don't play these songs more often during the year, because we just all love them, you know, I think. And uh, maybe this is not a Christmas song, but uh, maybe it should be. I can't sing it. It's kind of like in the bleak midwinter. It's one of Haley's songs that she sings, but I'll do my best. It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart Without saying a word, you light up the dark Try if I may, I could never explain what I hear when you don't say a thing Sing with me The smile on your face lets me know that you need me There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me The touch of your hand says you'll catch me ever I fall say it best when you say nothing at all all day long I hear people talking out loud but when you hold me near Drown out the crowd Oh, Mr. Webster could never define What's being said between your heart and mine The 
The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me. The touch of your hand says you'll catch me whenever I fall. Hey, you say it best when you say nothing at all. smile on your face lets me know that you need me the truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me the touch of your hand says you'll catch me whenever I fall you say it best when you say nothing at all Sing that again You say it best When you say nothing at all You say it best You say it best when you say nothing at all. And uh, wow, what a great song. It really is. And uh, I wish you could hear Haley sing it. We've sung that song all over the world. Some of the most meaningful times, and I'll tell you one of those, was at a place in England, outside Nebworth, England, at Lonsdale School, a, uh, a special needs school. And Robert Wilson always, and Mary, his wife, always worked it out for us to be there. And there was another pastor that she passed away not too long ago. And and uh, she was a vicar there at a church. And then she started working with uh, visiting, visitation in hospitals and hospice and so on. Uh, but they worked it out for us to play at this Lonsdale school. It was tough. I mean, because a lot of those kids, I mean, they were terminal. Many of them were terminal, weren't going to make it through the year. And we would go there sometimes, uh, September, October, usually in October, sometimes November. But even September, October, we would uh, we would play Christmas songs. So I always think of them when I think about Christmas and doing a lot of these songs. I think about the kids there at that, that, that school. I remember one time we were on our way in and Haley just, uh, she said, Dad, I can't. And she just started crying. She said, I can't do this. And it, it was just so difficult uh, sometimes to see those kids because we got to know them, a lot of them. And uh, there were some that did, uh, you know, that were there for several years. And, uh, and I remember going over and praying with her. I said, Haley. And I prayed with her. I said, Lord, help touch Haley. I said, now, Haley, suck it up and go in there and do it. <laughs> that might seem cruel, but she knows me better than that. I said, no, Haley, it's not easy. It's not easy for me, but it's something that we can do. We can do this, and God's going to help you to do it. And she said, Dad, I'm so glad we did that. I mean, you know, it's one of the highlights of our year. And it was such a blessing. But when the first time we went, Oh, I mean, I, I did crazy songs like, you know, uh, you had a boyfriend that looked like my girlfriend in February of last year. Or something. And we'd sing that. And, uh, and but then we, we'd do silly stuff and I'd play guitar and I'd let them play and I'd get down and, and a lot of them were in wheelchairs and they were spinning around in wheelchairs and, and uh, they'd get tangled up in their oxygen hoses and things like that. And I'd I'd go down and they'd let and I'd let them strum my guitar while I was performing. I just you you do it and they'd start strumming, you know. And uh, but at the end, uh, Haley, I had I said, "Won't you do when you say nothing at all?" And when we started singing this, you know, the touch of your hand says you'll catch me if ever I fall. And the teacher told us later, the the principal actually, she said, "That's our that's our song." That's like the school song. They all and they sung every word. And she looked at me, and tears just came down her face. I'll never forget that as long as I live. You say nothing. You say it best when you say nothing at all.
And that's what I want to talk about today. And, uh, you know, especially at Christmas, you know, when people are hurting and, and there are things going on in their lives, first of all, before I get into this too much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Holly told me, said, Dad, I sent out a, a load of stuff this week to people. They're ordering capos, they're ordering strings. Thank you so much. It really helps us. They're ordering books. And uh, uh, Steve Lyon and I, Steve was the, uh, he was actually the, the uh, editor-in-chief of Moody Publishing, and he was the one that encouraged me to write this book. <laughs> and, uh, and we're still selling them, Steve. And, and what a blessing it is, The Lights of Marfa. And it's just a lot of my stories. It has the audio book here, too, if you're interested in that. And that's where, and I read the whole thing. You know, and I looked at other people that read their books, like Rick Warren and even George W. Bush read his book. And Keith Richards, uh, well, maybe he didn't read it. He read part of it anyway. And uh, <laughs> Johnny Depp, I think, read part of it as well. He read the last chapter, I think it was, but it was cool. And so uh, a lot of Sunday school words in that one. <laughs> anyway, how'd I get into that, folks? Um Sunday school, uh, Sunday string along and uh, string winder here. Uh, and then somebody gave that to me, by the way. It, but it was interesting. It's look at this. Uh, I was talking about the Keith Richards book, but the uh, f f uh fingerboard, uh, <laughs> this is fingerboard care kit. I got myself in trouble today. Oh my goodness. These cups are great mugs. We have all kinds. We have diner mugs. We have uh, guitar care kits where you can, you know, polish kits and, and cleaning. And I always clean my guitar when I change the strings. And uh, diner cups. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing to our channel and for sharing with others. We appreciate it so much, you know. And uh, you say it best when you say nothing at all. You know, when people are hurting, what do you do? You know, you just be about, what do you say? Sometimes you're better off to say nothing at all. And uh, I was listening to a thing from Kay Warren, Rick and Kay Warren. You know, they lost their son a number of years ago. And uh, and they've they've done a lot of, uh, they've written books on it. They've, they've gone to a lot of conferences. And uh, she said, the one thing you don't want to say, these two words, at least... Well, like, you know, at least you had him for 27 years or at least, you know, you, you were married for all these. Well, at least you're young enough. You can get married again. At least you can have more children. At least don't get into that. And I agree when you say at least that it minimizes the grief that you're in right now. You know, when I was looking uh, the other day, uh, just a few days ago, our, our good friend Leo Matheny passed away, my you know, 90-year-old Sunday school teacher friend. He was 92 when he passed away. And we were sitting around his table. My wife was there. And, uh, and of course, his daughter. We were all talking. But Virginia, his wife, just sat there very, very quietly. And uh, But Rita and I were talking later. You know, Virginia didn't say much. But she said so much, you know, just from her expressions. And she said so much just being there and listening and talking about Leo. But she had such a love for him. They've been married over 60 years together. And you think about that, folks. And uh, you could just f feel that from her. She didn't have to say anything. She really didn't. And I, just, I don't think I'll, I'll forget that. Be available to people. You know, you, it's not what you say. Some people say the dumbest things, honestly, you know. Some people went up to my mom, you know, and they just said the craziest things. And they don't mean anything by it. And I'm sure I've said the wrong thing a lot of times. And uh, especially me. But when somebody is hurting, uh, you know, maybe it's perhaps they're in a hospital you just go in there and, and bless them and, and be there. Your presence means more than anything. And uh, Rick Warren says, show up and shut up. <laughs> and uh, maybe so, you know. And uh, But there, uh, there are so many things that, you know, you'd like to say, but you can't really say the right thing. Sometimes it's best to say nothing at all. 
You look at Job's friends. He sat for three days. They just did nothing but listen to him in his grief. But when they started talking, that's when things changed. That's when the whole thing, and they messed up, you know. So sometimes it's better not to talk. And uh, Rick Warren also said this, you know, what got us through that, he said, it was the small groups. And he said, our groups of our real close friends. He said, you're, I know you're not staying by yourselves. We're going to spend the night with you. And he said, we had, had to put, a, put out pallets on the floor, but they did. They wouldn't leave them alone. They wouldn't let them just be alone. They didn't talk all night. They, they were just there with them. He said, it was very close friends, but family. He said, it wasn't just faith that got us. It was faith and friends that got us through that time. So it's not always what you say, it's just being there and support by being there. Also, when someone is in need, you know, sometimes it's best to do something instead of just say something. And when I was going through my operation, I was told that I had to, I couldn't work for three months. Yeah, I'd never not work for three months, ever, that I remember, ever. And, uh, and I'm thinking, how am I going to do it? Of course, I didn't actually. I only took off half that six weeks. In fact, my first place I went to was Rick Warren's and uh, at his church. And Rick Muchow had invited me. And so that was my goal to make that. I didn't tell Rick that. Oh, I just had brain surgery, you know. But uh, people would call up. And I can't tell you, most of them, even their names right now. But they said, if you need anything, you just let us know. But I can tell you the ones that did do something. They didn't even ask if you, oh, Doyle, I know you're not going to be working for a while. Uh, or, you know, if you need anything, you let you tell me. You don't have to ask. You know they're going to need stuff. You know, they're going to need money. They're going to need financial help. And uh, I remember the first uh, check I got was from a, a good buddy of mine. He was a, he was a, work, he was a choir director. <laughs> he was a worship leader down in South Georgia. And he sent me a check. I still remember he sent me a check for $500. That was a lot of money to, to us because I wasn't working at all. Other people that said, if you let us know, I'm not going to tell them. I'd be, well, hey, yeah, I want you. Remember what you said the other day? All right, you can send that check now. <laughs> You're not going to do that. So quit doing that. Quit saying if you need help. If you have it, just give it. Just send it to them. Put it in their P.O. box or send it to their house or is, or, or whatever, or just bring a meal by, or just send them a card of encouragement if you don't have the money for us. I'm praying for you. That means as much as money or anything else. I, has, I still have my stack of cards of people that sent cards, or we're praying for you, Brother Doyle. We love you, and thank you so much. And it, it was such a bl- A lot of them came from uh, my Taylor. Back then, I was with Taylor Guitars my, doing my Taylor clinics and things like that. And so, uh, you know, two, two kinds of people, those that talk about it and those that do it. And so just do it. And so anyway, you'll remember those that do, but you won't remember those that just talked about it. <laughs> and that's the truth. Uh, be mindful to be a blessing. You know, the Bible says this in, uh, in the book of, J- uh, see, actually in Galatians. Let me read this. I, I've got it amplified. Sin and sorrow were at my side till I found out my Bible was amplified. And uh, I heard that saying years ago. <laughs> this, let's see, this was it. Well, here's, there's well, James. I won't get into that right now. But uh, in Galatians, I don't even think I marked this. Did I? Maybe I, yeah, I did. Uh, remember, let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And then he's talking about you being, you know, receiving a blessing. You're going to reap if you don't lose heart and, and don't throw away your confidence. This is the next verse. So then, as occasion and opportunity open up to us, and it will, God will direct you to the right people. Let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing. Set it in your heart every day. I want to be a blessing to somebody today. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, to your brothers and your sisters in the Lord, those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. And this can be on a one-on-one thing or filling a shoebox with toys or going out and helping other people. Uh, we used to have a thing in Jacksonville, Florida called 
Dorcas Drake. I have a plaque in here in the next room, and, and even the the newspaper articles uh, uh, when we had our band, and I became her. Our youth band at church became her band. And uh, anyway, once she lived at one Santa Claus Lane. She was a judge there in Jacksonville, Florida, and we gave uh, toys, or she did, to. I think about 50,000 kids went through the the Jacksonville Coliseum, and we did that every year. Was it work? Yeah, we even worked through the year at her warehouse, putting things together and stuff. And so be mindful to be a blessing. Do something with what God has given you. You know, the Bible says in James 2 and 8, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. And this is to demonstrate the, the evidence of, of your salvation and your love for the Lord and for others. And not only the way you believe, but the way you behave. <laughs> In James 2 and 26, for as the body is without the spirit is, or the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So show me your faith and love by your works is what he's saying. That whole section of James chapter two talks about that. In Proverbs 3, 27, don't withhold good from those who deserve it when, it is, when it's in your power to be able to help them. Let me read that again. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it, and you'll know those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. I remember years ago, Grandpa Jones, we were doing a show. Well, we, I used to work with Grandpa Jones, and he paid us good. I mean, he paid George and uh, George McCormick, the other guitar guy, and, and he sang harmony with us. He used to work on the Porter Wagner show. You'd see him with that big uh, arch top guitar. He's always smiling. That was George McCormick, and it was George, Grandpa George, and me. And there was, in fact, Grandpa was. Uh, let's see, he was. Old, see, he he was twice as old as George, and George was twice as old as me. So Grandpa, I think uh, Grandpa was uh, 61 or 62 when I went to work for him, and George was 41, 42, and then I was 21, 22 then. And uh, I just have to think, when was it? And so, uh, yeah, I, it was hard. It's hard to believe that I'm way older than Grandpa was when I was with him, and I thought he was old, man. <laughs> But uh, but Grandpa was a character. He really was. But when we didn't work, we didn't get paid. He paid us well when we worked. But there was a time there it was a winter that went by, and uh, man, it was tough. I was uh, just a young father. Uh, Rita and I had Heidi when we were with Grandpa Jones. Uh, Heidi was born during that time, and uh, it was tough. And so I remember, uh, you know, we were getting through the winter. We'd do the Opry on the weekends, and uh, but the Opry didn't bring a lot of money and uh, to a young musician like that, you know, unless you were higher up. But uh, I remember one time we had a date. This is kind of stuck right in the winter time, and I think it was in Columbus, Ohio, if I remember right. And we got up there. It was a big show, big package show, uh, with a lot of other entertainers there. And when we got back, Grandpa took one third of it and gave George a third and me a third. And, uh, and he paid all the expenses out of his third. <laughs> and he didn't ask us, Do you guys need money? Well, he knew we did. And so he just gave us, it was $1,500. I remember that's what grandpa used to get back then. And, uh, uh, which is nothing compared to, you know, even, I think even then what he was worth. But uh, he didn't want to overcharge. I remember when I first went to work for him, he was a lot less than that. Then he doubled it. Then he tripled it. <laughs> and Eloise's daughter, she couldn't, he had more dates when he tripled it than when he didn't, when he, was, when he started off uh, cheap. But, uh, but he gave us what he used to make all the time. That's $8,000 in today's money. I think it's $8,022 or something. I looked it up. And uh, I'll never forget that. I mean, he didn't ask us, oh, you boys, do y'all need money? Well, Lord, he knew we did. And uh, I remember during the pandemic, uh, an elderly gentleman called me over. I want you to give me a guitar lesson. Well, I did. And uh, he wanted to uh, you know, play it for his friends and, and so forth at church. And, 
And so when I left, he said, well, I'm going to pay for this guitar lesson. I said, no, sir, I'm not going to do that. Because people had tried to tell me, you can get money online during the pandemic if you just, you know, and that's fine for all the guys that did that. It's great, but I, I just didn't feel like that's what I was supposed to do. So I put free guitar lessons on there. Eric Johnson did the same thing. He said, if you want to give anything, he said, go, go down to your local food bank and put some canned food or, or, or donate to it. That's what he did. And I thought, you know, he's a rock star. I can do this, the same thing, too. And so uh, I, I wouldn't charge anybody for a guitar lesson, especially him. He was a friend. He said, no, I'm, I'm paying you for it. I said, no, sir. He said, God told me to. God told me to do this. I said, yes, sir. And, uh, and, and I looked on there and, and it was a one and a five and I figure it was $15 maybe, or well, knowing him might've been $150. So when I get it, got in, uh, Kayla, I drove my son's truck over there and, uh, anyway, it was $15,000. And so that took care of two or three months there that we needed it. I mean, he didn't ask me anything. He didn't need a guitar lesson from me. It was just something he wanted to do. I'll never forget that. And it's not something that I had planned on even saying in this show, but it's important. He could do it, and he did it, and it didn't hurt him at all. I know it didn't, but I would have never asked him for anything, ever. I would have never done that. And so don't wait for people to ask. Sometimes you say it best when you say nothing at all. And so there are others I, I could give you. I, I think one of my my favorites is uh, is my mom. And, <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember she was in her 80s. Dad had passed away. And she wouldn't stay off the riding lawnmower. I said, Mom, you're going to have to stay off that riding lawnmower. And I went to her house and uh, and I had to go. I had to go back to Tennessee, and I had other things to do. But I visited with her, and I was at her home, you know. And oh my lord, yeah, it was just even embarrassing to even think about it. My mom getting out there on the lawnmower, and I, and I, my brother, you know, he he'd do it sometime, but he said, "Well, I don't, I can't talk. What can you say? She's mama." And uh, but I said, "Mom, promise me you're not going to go get on that lawnmower again." And she looked down. She said, well, that long, I said, Mom, please, please do that. Okay. And so she called me up the next day. I got in late that night. She called me up the next morning kind of early. Hey, Dole. She said, guess what I woke up to, to the sound of? And I said, what's that, Mama? She said, a riding lawnmower. <laughs> I said, really? She said, that Mr. Webster. And every time I hear this song, oh, Mr. Webster, he could never define what's what's going on. It says he can never define what's being said between your heart and mine. And it was her neighbor, Mr. Webster, next door, went over. That was the first time I remember, first time he started cutting her grass. He's been doing it still ever since, you know. And she has another neighbor now that helps. He cuts half, the other guy cuts half. Mr. Webster, old Mr. Webster. Let me read this again. Proverbs 3.27. This is in the message. Never walk. It says, never walk uh, from some, away from someone who deserves help in your hand. It says, this is in the message. Let me read it. I can read this better. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. So your hand is God's hand for that person. Your hand is God's hand for that person. You say it best. Luke chapter 7. A Pharisee asked Jesus into his home. Let me read this. This is too good. I can't leave this off. And top of my head shot again, folks. But I can't leave without reading this. And it's in Luke chapter 7. One of the Pharisees. And he'd just been followed around by Pharisees all the time. They were trying to get him on stuff. And, and you know, they, they were against Jesus more than any other sect of the, of the Israel, uh, of the Jewish leaders. One of the Pharisees asked him over for a meal. Hmm. Well, what's he doing? Is he just being really nice or is he trying to catch him on something? And he went to the Pharisee's house and he sat down at the dinner table. And just then a woman of the village the town harlot, having learned that Jesus was a guest in the house, the home of the, Pharise, uh, the home of the Pharisee, 
She came in with a bottle of very expensive perfume and stood at his feet. And she's weeping, raining tears on his feet. Letting down her hair, she dried his feet and kissed them and anointed them with perfume. And when the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, we always wonder how in the world she got in. Maybe it's because she was a, a pretty lady and had a very expensive uh, bo alabaster box, they called it, a perfume, very, very costly. And they let her, and the, the gatekeeper obviously let her in thinking that she was going to give a gift. And so when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus in, he said to himself, he didn't say to Jesus, he didn't even say it out loud, but he said this to himself, if this man was the prophet that I thought he was, he would have known what kind of woman this is and who is falling all over him. Well, Jesus, knowing his thoughts, listen to this. Simon, I have something to tell you. Oh, well, tell me. <laughs> Would you speak to the Savior that way, to the King of Kings? Oh, well, then tell me. And, oh, I'm skipping a page here. And then he's... Okay, sorry about that, folks. These pages are so thin. Two men were in debt to a banker, and one owed 500 silver pieces, the other 50. Neither of them could pay up, and so the banker canceled both debts. Which of the two would be more grateful? Simon answered, well, I suppose the one who had forgiven the most. That's the only time, <laughs> only time he answered right <laughs> that whole day. And that's right, said Jesus, then turning to the woman, but he was still talking to Simon. He turned to the woman and said, do you see this woman? And he's looking at her. He says, I came to your home. You provided no water for my feet, which was accustomed then. And, and she rained tears on my feet and dried them with her hair. You gave me no greeting, but from the time I arrived, she hasn't quit, quit kissing my feet. She, uh, you know, it was customary to kiss each other on the cheek then. The men, even the men, with a holy kiss. So you didn't do that. And she, uh, she, went, she bowed down and kissing my feet. And he said, you provided nothing for freshening, freshening up, but she has soothed my feet with perfume. Impressive, isn't it? She has forgiven. She was forgiven many, many sins. So she is very, very grateful. If the forgiveness is minimal, the gratitude is minimal. And then he spoke to her, directly to her. I forgive your sins. Wow. And that set the dinner guest talking behind his back. Who does he think he is forgiving sins? And he ignored them. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, God knows your thoughts. He knows you know, what you're thinking on the inside in your heart and your expression of love towards him. Sometimes you say it best when you say nothing at all. She never said a word during that whole time. She just went in and loved on Jesus. Amen. Let me read this again. Never walk away from someone who deserves help. Your hand is God's hand for that person. Be that to someone this Christmas. So per perhaps this is a Christmas song. Amen. And uh, let's see. Oh, Mr. Webster can never define What's being said between your heart and mine The smile on your face lets me know that you the truth in your eyes saying you'll never leave me. The touch of your hand says you'll catch me ever I fall. You say it best when you say nothing at all. say it best when you say nothing at all one more time
more time, folks. You say it best when you say nothing at all. Father, Lord, forgive us for ever t uh, taking advantage of other people, knowing they're in need and, and, and holding back on that. Help us not to do that. Let us be mindful to be a blessing. And Lord, I pray that you'll use us. Let our hands be your hands, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us make a difference. Let other people see our faith and our salvation and our love for you, Lord, through our works and what we do. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. But let others see that outward expression of our faith and do something special for someone this Christmas season. Guide us and lead us to do that, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name name in Jesus name God bless you if you haven't received Jesus just say Lord I just thank you for this opportunity to get to know you I want a relationship with you make me what you want me to be I receive you as Lord of my life receive me right where I am in Jesus name amen and he'll say to you thy sins be forgiven you amen God bless you folks thanks thank you so much for joining me on my Sunday string along